Data can shape a better city. It can make our cities more sustainable, connected, and even more memorable. Every day, I work with data, people, and technology, and as a designer, through experience, know that it's the human factors around data that are as important as the data itself. As a society, we are accumulating data like never before. It's like 90% of the world's data has been generated in the last two years. I don't know about you, that makes me feel rather overwhelmed. But I'm not concerned because I know we can't drown in data. It's only information, and it doesn't provide us the basic requirements of materials and energy that we need to survive. And also, if we have an infinite capacity to generate data and store it, we know that making better cities isn't necessarily about data, and it's more about knowledge and how we share that knowledge of our environments. And that's where I think data visualization plays such an important role. It connects people with data, and it connects people through data. And data visualization gives us a language like notes and music, or words and writing. And with that language, we get both process and an interface to work with large scales of data. As a designer, I have worked on projects for exhibitions, visualizing data to get people interested in the macro view of the world, R&D projects, and also allowing public data to be accessed through visual interfaces. Once I was even a data designer in residence with the symphony orchestra, the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra, and it was amazing to think about data within an arts organisation. Originally, I was trained as an architect and always wanted to be an architect from a very young age. But I think it was when I started creating things with computers that that path, I was going to stray from that path of being an architect. Uh, I became a research fellow at a spatial information architecture laboratory and was exploring the idea of how can we create 3D spaces to explore information and present our image catalogues. Three-dimensional spaces are incredible. They give you perspective on your content. Also, as an educator, I love using video games in virtual environments. They make us think differently about our world, but they are incredible mirrors of our physical world. And as an educator working with students and getting the next generation of architects to think about interactivity, information, narrative, and sound. One example is this image. This is two years of student design work in a virtual environment at RMIT University. Every object you see there has been placed by an avatar, a virtual person, in a shared environment. And to me, this is all just data. But with imagination, we never just see data. What do we see in this image? Is it art, science, or is it design? Of course, we see a nicely dressed man waving a stick. And this was Murray in 1886, experimenting with multiple exposures in photography and giving us a sense of the harmonics of matter in motion. I think this image is amazing. It's like a, a capturing of something virtual in one photograph. And it's a metaphor for data visualization. And it's also a metaphor for how we construct things in our imagination. So as we move into cities full with data, I hope we use our imaginations as much as we use our analyti analytical minds because I think metaphor is probably one of the key aspects of how we connect people to data or through data. And metaphors like the satellite view of the world showing the relationship between countries and how each country compares to each other over time. This gives us a great macro view of our current world situation. Or next, we'll see images of a network of communication, how different parts of the world are connecting through new internet-based telecommunications. This allows us to see things that we normally wouldn't. Well, other aspects of data visualization, 
the more traditional but now interactive views of maps and showing densities of population in our urban areas. Isn't this great to see where people are living and how people are moving through our cities? We have sensors now collecting how many pedestrians are moving through our city centres. Or more abstract representations. This is a project looking at virtual, um, virtual water or the way in which water moves in and out of a city. And the behaviour of data, the nature of data, is probably one of the next key things after working on the metaphor. You know, what makes data work as a visual communication device? So with the water project for Melbourne Water, it was actually a design installation commission to start with, which then became a series of public posters and also an interactive website. In this project, we looked at 10 years of data and looked at ways to show through this kind of circular metaphor of time around the circle showing one year, the relationships between storage and reservoirs in blue, river levels in green, and that yucky sensation of sewerage coming out of your city in orange. And if we look closely, the, the rain is indicated by the white dots. The circles aren't actually solid. Each line is one day in the year. And so rain pouring in the vicinity of the storage makes the reservoirs fill up, and it also causes these spikes to go through the rivers and the sewers. And it's interesting, these kind of more artistic representations of data then made the engineers come out and say, oh yeah, as you can see that pattern in the sewerage where it dips every January, which is at the top of the orange circle, well that's when everyone leaves Melbourne after Christmas and the sewerage drops off. Those guys can also tell when the intervals are happening in major sporting events, when everyone's, you know, runs away from the TV or the grandstand, and you know what they do. Uh, if we zoom out further, we see then another scale, another order of magnitude. Ten years of data presented as a series of shapes, and these shapes show that the water storage, the big kind of blue shape that could potentially always be at 100%, a full circle, in the years of 2006 to 2009, were drastically kind of reshaped because of the, drought, the severe drought happening in Melbourne. So data and context is the next thing. We have metaphor, we have the behaviour of data, and now we have context, which I, I think is the most critical. And in this project, we're looking at the visualisation of 70,000 trees in Melbourne, a great collaboration with the urban forest team in the city of Melbourne. Imagine flying over a city and seeing every tree and then being able to interact with that tree. This project emerged from a data set where someone had gone around over a year and a half and looked at every single tree in the city and estimated their useful lifetime expectancy. And with this project, we started to look at ways of communicating that lifetime and also some other characteristics of the urban forest. So here we see a map of every single tree. And the only thing on this map are trees, and they're coloured. Anything that is orange or yellow is a tree that is near retirement, or in other words, somewhat at risk to you know, severe drought or other conditions. If we zoom into this map, we start to see some character emerge in the iconography. So these symbols represent the top trees in the urban forest. So the round ones are the plane trees, and the triangle is an elm tree. So when we look at the map, we can see some patterns emerging in our significant parks and gardens in the city or our tree-lined avenues that it's you know, potentially one type of tree that is most affected and some of the character of our city might start to be eroded over time. This project sits within a context of a digital you know, online website and it's something that's evolving with three years of public consultation. And what's also interesting is this map is a fully interactive map. You can go down to the detail and find your favourite tree and click on it and send it an email. <laughs> and this is just beautiful. People connecting with our city in new ways. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. There's also layers of other information. We can see the diversity breakdown, the way in which the city um, diversity of tree stock is mainly in the elm trees and the plains that there is the most concern. 
And on the right is the canopy projections. How much shade are we going to get from our trees into the future? What do we have to do now so in 50 years' time we actually have more shade, not less? And this project really brings up a couple of concepts that I think are really interesting looking forward to how we shape cities. One is the way in which citizens participate. Visualization, data provides this new form of interface where people can engage and you know, talk directly through data with, say, the urban forest team or with the people that manage the data. And the second concept is data stewards. Our city organizations that have the data need to provide this kind of information or knowledge around it, need to basically wrap that information in knowledge so people are better informed. So I think data can shape a better city, but it won't do it by itself. And through the art of data visualization, we have both process and interface to deal with these large sums of information. And by connecting it through people and context, that will enable our knowledge to adapt to the changing needs of our city. Thank you.